In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Hi, welcome to the In The Last Days television program with myself, Martin Blackham. Great to have you with us. If you were watching our Christmas special back in December, you will remember that we had Pastor Stephen Curry from uh, Jerusalem Calvary Baptist Church for the Christmas special. And it's great to have you, uh, him back in the studio again. Thank you, Steve, so much for coming across today uh, to speak with us and the audience. Um, a lot of people really enjoyed the a Christmas special and um, you know I'll tell you a bit of bit behind the scenes I I watched it myself this year and uh, it was a great program you know it was very it was, interesting yeah. for the for 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 our viewers uh, so we welcome you today wherever you're watching uh, we're the program that looks at Israel we look behind the scenes at the news and um, at Hebraic roots so uh, Pastor Stephen Khoury is an Arab Israeli living in Bethlehem or you were living in Bethlehem uh, where his father, Dr. Naim Khoury, established a church in 1980. He is the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Jerusalem, was born in Jerusalem and grew up a few miles south of Bethlehem. Uh, pastor Stephen attended Bible College in Springfield, Missouri in the United States. Uh, he is an affiliate with the Baptist Bible Fellowship International, the National Christian Foundation, Voice of Martyrs organization. Pastor Stephen has recently produced the book Diplomatic Christianity, has been discussed in Haaretz newspaper, several books, and has featured some Fox News, CBN News, and on the Glenn Beck program in the United States. He currently writes articles for, or you were writing articles for Al Quds, the largest Arabic newspaper in the Holy Land, and you were one of the speakers at the Washington Summit for Christians United for Israel in 2012. So it's really great to have you with us and to bring your experience of what it's like to, to, to live in the Holy Land, to live in uh, Bethlehem, to live in Jerusalem and to be working with uh, Arab Christians. So what I think it'd be really great to start off, and d uh, there is a book, I'm going to talk about the book that Stephen's written, The Backyard of Jesus. So we mustn't forget to uh, 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 talk about the book. Uh, we'll be mentioning that and how you can get hold of that on the program today. Now, um, because of everything happening in Israel, I think it'd be really interesting for our viewers, your, your kind of um, take on it and what you think about it. But uh, the recent um, spike in terror attacks, some people are calling it the knife intifada or the knife attacks or the uh, third intifada. And how is it for, for yourself and for those who are living uh, in the territories and for those who are for Arab Christians, how, how is it for you at the moment? And, and, what, and maybe you can give us an update about the church and what's sure. happening. I, I, I personally don't give it the credit of calling it an intifada. I think there's too much of credit than it deserves. Um, a, an intifada means uprising. Um, and, and usually, in general tense of uprising, usually it has to have the majority of the, of the population to be doing that thing to be called an intifada. And of course, a stabbing uh, is one out of uh, 10,000 Arabs or one out of 20,000 Arabs are, are considering doing it or doing it. So it's just it's an act of violence, of terror. Um, and many Arabs, many Arabs, they, they, they speak against it. They don't like it. They don't agree with it. Um, of course, they don't speak out as much as they need to because obviously there's retaliation from family and relatives or sometimes a fanatical extremism. Even telling you what I'm telling you right now, I, I probably will get kid, could get killed for it if, it's, uh, if it gets heard or seen in the, in the wrong streets in, 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 in the West Bank. There is a sense of dark hopelessness, but at the same time, simultaneously, there is a sense of hope, meaning that um, there are Arabs slowly behind the scenes trying to, to remind uh, their neighbors, the Jews and non-Jews, that uh, we want to build, we want to live together, we want to coexist together. Uh, we're starting to see that more and more. You're starting to see more Arabs work on the Jewish side, and you're starting to see more Jewish in the, Jews in the community try to reach out to Arabs in the community. Uh, many know of my good relationship with Rabbi David Nekrutman um, and uh, with Rabbi Riskin, and recently of building a relationship with a Hasidic uh, rabbi, one of Jerusalem's. I won't mention his name for his security reasons, but I'm, uh, I just had lunch at a very ultra-Orthodox uh, 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 kosher restaurant and had dinner for three hours with 
with a Hasidic uh, rabbi of one of top Jerusalem's top rabbis. We talked a lot about a lot of things. Talk about Jesus as well. It's kind of interesting to talk about Jesus with an ultra orthodox Hasidic uh, Jewish rabbi. Um, in the city of Bethlehem, yes, are Christians still considering fleeing and leaving the land uh, because uh, they they feel that they've been rowing, rowing, rowing a boat, and it just keeps going in circles. Or sometimes rather than going forward, it's going backwards. And um, is talking about Jesus or, or preaching verses to them many times, it's just, it's just not enough. You have to come alongside of them. You have to care for them. You have to love them. I, I remember even the scene from, uh, the, scene from the movie Glad Gladiator where uh, the, the, the son just becomes Caesar and he, become, and he, goes, into the con he goes into the Congress uh, amongst all the, all the high priests or all the government officials and and in there he talks about hope and hope and hope and one of, one of the members uh, of, the high, of, the, of the high congress, he, he goes up to, the, to, to this young Caesar and says, have you hugged a man with a leprosy? Because he was talking about loving and caring and words. And uh, he challenges him, have you hugged a person with leprosy? Have you helped a, a, a crippled walk? And, and that's, what's, that's, the, that's the dilemma today. We've, we've, we've used fancy words over the years, as whether it be Christians, Jews, or even you know, quote-unquote moderate Muslims. Uh, we, we've all used fancy words, uh, but unfortunately never put those fancy words to actual practical action. Um, there are some that are doing it, but definitely not enough to really cause a ripple effect of change. Um, in Bethlehem, we are trying to not just talk about peace. We're trying to be peace by going out and reaching out, sharing the message of Jesus, feeding the hungry, helping the poor, um, trying to educate them, trying to invite them into our church property, just to sit down and just build a relationship. Let's talk. There, yes, there could be a retaliation. We could be attacked. We, there could be a death threat. So something could happen. But it's a price we're willing to pay because we see it working and we know it works. We see it changing lives. And uh, I, I hear that uh, you've started a program, a television program, uh, called Boldness. We did. We um, it's two years ago. I'm traveling in America, uh, and I'll I'll, I'll express I'll, I'll tell the history very shortly. Um, I was in America for three months. Uh, three different people from three different states came up to me and said, Pastor Curry, they said almost the same exact thing. They said, Pastor Curry, just we feel the spirit of, God, of the Lord uh, 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 burning our heart to ask you, to tell you, we need, we need you to help us in America. And, and my response to, to the first one was, my calling is Israel and, and the Palestinian West Bank communities, uh, Judea, Samaria, that's my calling. Um, and they said, I thought they were asking me to come to America and serve the churches in America, but they weren't. They said, Pastor Curry, would you help us uh, teach us how to reach the English-speaking Muslims for Christ. Teach us how to be bold. Show us how to to, to build relationships with the non-speaking with the English-speaking Muslims and the non-English-speaking Muslims who are coming to America and to the West. And, and I think this is going to be very relevant. You know, there's people watching today, and I know there's somebody watching who is uh, trying to reach Muslim neighbors. Yeah. And and doesn't really know what to do. They're afraid. They don't know what to do. They have misconception. So uh, these three people said the same exact thing, three different states. And I said, Lord, I'm listening. You got my attention. Um, uh, and that developed into us doing this uh, a TV program. Uh, we just uh, finished our 11th episodes. Actually, by uh, within the next two weeks, uh, they all will be ready uh, to be aired and uploaded and be ready to be viewed. Um, it's uh, it's a full full 30 minute episode, and I take you into people's homes. I, I take you into a Muslim home. You, sh you see me interact with the males and the females. You see how I talk. You see how I eat lunch with them. Um, I also take you to sit down with, the, with Muslim clerics to talk about certain issues that we have in common and to sort of see how, how we maneuver things around. You also see me win a Muslim to Christ on camera, which was not planned. But you, you see me lead him to Christ, to prayer of salvation, on camera, and you see his tears come down. But the mere fact that a, a, a God would it would a, 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 a become flesh and die on the cross for his sins, uh, you see it all on for on camera. It's it's a beautiful a, effect, and I challenge you to to uh, humanize the, the the Muslim aspect of it. They are human beings. Uh, right. They are they they are not bound by their religious identity. Um, that's just something they've adopted from their family and relatives. It's, um, it, it can't be separated. You can't uh, separate the two. And I know there's people watching who will be very interested in that. They're going to be, they'll be asking, uh, how can we uh, access this when it's ready? You can right now see a pilot program on stephencurryministries.org. 
people can view a view it right now and of course shortly it will be probably aired on some TV networks uh, in America and in, and in Europe right, we're as putting well. that on the screen at the moment uh, the uh, website you can click on to right now if you're watching the program and uh, you can go on to that and they can see a pilot program or yes a pilot a full pilot it's about 12 minute pilot episode and you get to see a little bit about you get a little taste of what's the 11 or 12 episodes uh, are all about now if they if they, there's some people who are watching who'd like to show it in a group situation do they have to contact you yes or? yeah they would have to contact us um, and we would uh, we would uh, discuss it with them from there okay. and then eventually we will have materials teaching materials uh, dealing every episode will have a teaching material dealing with how a church a small group can take this episode and and, and take the materials with it the teaching program the, the actual teaching notes and to walk through walk you through it I always encourage practicing get get your get your friend get your co-worker uh, or get somebody that's within your church or within your Bible study your praying partner and, and treat them like a Muslim look at them as a Muslim and try to practice practice out how to love them as a Muslim. I think that's the hardest thing for us as Westerners, as Christians, is to love the Muslim community. And, and we are sometimes the gospel's worst enemy. And do you think it's because sometimes we, we try to immediately impose views rather than waiting to make friendships? And Yes, I, I tell people, the person in front of you will most probably be what you expect them to be. If I come into a room, expect you uh, and look at you and expect to be an enemy, regardless how nice you're going to be to me, you're always going to be my enemy in my mind. Um, and sometimes I might even push you to actually become a real enemy. Um, it, I tell people, most people tend to be what you expect them to be and how you treat them to be. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's time that we start to show the love of Jesus. We have to be different. We have to be different than the world. We have to be different than, than those that don't know the love of Jesus Christ. Uh, we have to show them, remind them that Christianity is the only hope. The faith of Jesus Christ is the only hope for this lost world, the dark world. I've seen it over and over and over again, um, where, where Muslims and non-Muslims would tell you the f bags of food. You know, I go to Gaza on a regular basis. I do outreach, training, discipleship, evangelism there. The Muslims I meet there would tell, would tell me that tons and tons of rice and food they dump on us, that's just Band-Aid solution. It does not change the heart. It does not change the mind. And these are Muslims that have either received Christ or are, are intrigued by the teachings of Jesus. And they allow the teachings of Jesus to influence their minds and hearts and not necessarily have adopted Christianity. Uh, but they tell me the only thing that changed us or, or held us back from doing more violence, more killing, whatever it be, it's the, the, the ringing message in our ears of Jesus. Now, uh, Stephen's written a book. We've got uh, Pastor Stephen Curry in the studio today, The Backyard of Jesus. And um, maybe you can tell us a bit about why you wrote the book and what, the, what they can, and how they can get hold of What's the best way for our viewers who are watching the program today to get hold of this book? Sure, brother. In The Backyard of Jesus, um, the purpose of me writing it is I wanted to give the, the, the world, the Christian world and the secular world an insight of how it is to be, to grow up as an Israeli Arab and sometimes also some call me a Palestinian Arab as well because I grew up in the, in the Palestinian communities of Bethlehem. Um, how it is to grow up in a war torn country, in a war torn era, uh, bad, they've seen intifadas and uprisings and, and, and down the line for 37 years, minus a few years of going to Bible college in the West. Um, it's an insight where I, I, I talk about how I also would go to school and what I would learn from my mother at home would clash with what I would hear in the schools, would, it would clash with what I would hear in the streets. And at age 9 or 10, I had to come to a realization I either believe mom's bedtime stories or I would believe what uh, schools would say, you know, they're the enemy, they're, you know, they, we will one day kill them and throw them in the Red Sea. Now, I heard a story or read something that you actually, at one stage, maybe when you were very young, but you actually threw stones at Israeli we, soldiers. We did, we did. You know, that's what we did for fun as young, as young Arab boys. It got us out of school for a couple months. Uh, you know, we, kids would, uh, would gather rocks and we'd throw the rocks over the fence from the school playground, playground. And then 30 minutes later, Israeli soldiers would come in, they would throw tear gas um, into the playground, and we all go home. They shut down the school for a month or two. So uh, we so were. So it was a strategy, really. It's yeah. stra a strategy, you know. And most of us didn't know what a Jew looked like uh, growing up as a little kid. So it's, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was fun. We just did it for fun, you know. And the older boys had, uh, you know, vendetta and anger and hatred against Jews. 
but most of us, Arab or, 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 or traditional Christians or Christians as young boys, uh, for us it was just young boys, 9, 10, 11, 12, um, having fun throwing rocks. <laughs> you know, it's, no, it, it doesn't make sense to the Western world, uh, but that's, that's what we had in Bethlehem. And, but thankfully, again, my stories of my mother and bedtime story would clash with what I would, uh, with what I would learn. I, and thankfully, the Bible won over. Um, and, um, you know, I would hear, you know, I would hear, they would hear say God's abandoned. He, he, he gave up on the Jews. They're, they're, uh, they're, they never may amount to anything. And then you go to the Bible, you start to realize how God it would take time out of his busy schedule and, 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 and throw manna from heaven. Um, we've, we've, we've suddenly rushed on to another question, which is great. But uh, I was thinking, you know, that uh, a lot of, one of the issues is, or, or one of the big things that you have to go through is this whole thing of replacement theology, which, uh, without going into all what it means, but basically it's cutting off the, the right of the Jews and the, the, that they're not God's people, etc. It's in the church is completely taken over. How, how is it for, for you and how is it for Arab uh, Christians uh, with this replacement theology? Because I know that, that there's a, it's kind of like a tension there, isn't it? Is that, is that right? It is a tension. Most, most Arabs don't know what the term means anyways. Right. Um, to them, it's Jesus came, the Jews crucified him, right. and now there's a thing called a church okay. or, or Christianity. So, honestly, I think we give him more credit on, on that aspect than, than, than actually it, it deserves and, and they deserve. Right. Um, I think with the, the mere focus on getting back to the roots of uh, rather than teaching the whole breakdown of Protestant theology, we need to teach that, hey, Jesus Christ was a Jew, Mary was a Jew, tribe of Judah, seed of Jesse. Um, that means the, 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 the Christian faith that we carry was based on the Jewish foundation. That's impor is, is, more important than replacement theology. Which, which is quite tricky when in your culture you're brought up that this is, you know, there's the wall, there's the occupation, etc., etc., and you're getting all this... And if you're watching the television, you're getting there's a, all this media that the Jews are bad, and then suddenly you read in your Bible that Jesus is a Jew and comes from a Jewish line. Yeah. So it must be quite a... a it's, a shock, it's a shocker to many. That's why many don't, don't read the Old Testament. Uh, unfortunately, many of the traditional churches within Israel and the West Bank and the Palestinian communities, Judea, Samaria, anywhere there's a church setting, traditional church settings, and some of the evangelical churches, unfortunately, do not uh, adhere to the Old Testament. You, you will most, fondly, most likely find only the New Testament. In some of the evangelical churches, you might find the Old and the New in one, but they, don't, they, they, they stay away from the Old Testament. Some teach from it, uh, but, they, but they try to stay away from it because it says Israel in there. God of Israel, the Jewish people, and so that scares them. At the same time, it's 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 a truth that they try to avoid looking at or discussing. Just like the many of the the Orthodox Jewish community that don't want to discuss Isaiah 52, 53, uh, or Genesis uh, 23. So, within that within that realm um, of the scope of things, yes, it's uh, it's a dangerous teaching, but it has to be taught, and it creates a love for the Jewish people, and not think, a political love. And I think if you look at the Bible without any kind of uh, glasses of color, you just look at it and yeah. take it as it's read. Yeah. I think that's, that's the safest way, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, that we can... It is, it is, and here's why. Because what many people do, brother, is, um, and I speak from the context of an, of an, of an Arab Israeli um, and an Arab Palestinian, both in one, uh, growing up amongst all these Arab believers, or Arab Christians, regardless who they are, traditional or non-traditional, what they do is, and, and, and I was asked this once on Fox News, why, why, you, why do they believe differently than you? Why are you those so different? Do you, do you read the same Bible as the church five minutes down the road in Bethlehem? My response to that was this, is that what we have is, is, danger, is a dangerous a, a mental attitude is that many of these Arab uh, Christians, regardless of the denomination, what they do is, Rather than the Bible steering their ideologies and the Bible steering their emotions and, and, and ba basing their judgment on biblical truth, it's the opposite. 
they steer the Bible, they guide the Bible with their emotions, with their, with their uh, experiences. So they allow one experience as a young boy being, being maybe mistreated by a soldier or being slapped by a soldier, which happens. Which, which is a serious thing, you know, you're, if you're it's, mistreated by somebody, yeah. it's a hard thing just to it's suddenly... A hard, it's a hard thing, it's a hard thing, but it doesn't change the, 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 the factuals and you have to go through check. Bible. You have to go through checkpoints. It's a tough, it's, listen, sometimes the Israelis are... Are, are hard. They even tell you we're hard to love. That's a joke. It's, you, you most ask more Israelis, they tell you we're arrogant and sometimes we're hard to love. Uh, but most people, most human beings, most people are around the world anyways. Um, and for me as an Arab, I have to learn to love them. I have to, uh, I, I must love them. It, that's, that, that's the commandment of Jesus Christ. You see, when Jesus Christ taught to love thy neighbor as thyself, he was not saying to love the person that it has the same bloodline or, or is related to you. He's challenging you. And Jesus spoke about it, to love thy neighbor as thyself. And within that same context, earlier he talks about the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan did something he's not supposed to do. He did something that everybody else uh, frowns upon. And that's what today Jesus wants you and I to do. He wants you and I to love those that we're not supposed to love. He wants us to forgive those that we technically nature and human nature and, and the society tells us not to love. That is the, the epitome of the Good Samaritan is, is that he did something he's not supposed to do. And, and life is such that, you know, we, the things happen to us and, you know, the... Life, you know, if life was perfect, then we wouldn't need God. Um, it's, life has trials, tribulations, they have tough times, it's good and bad. Um, the beauty about it is you have to remind yourself that we are overcomers, we are winners. Because God said, God promised, He said, in this world you will have trials and tribulations, but, but rest well or be a good peace. I've overcome the world. Um, they will persecute you. In the, in the Gospel of John, it says they will persecute you because they have persecuted me before you. Um, it, it's, it's, it's an attitude. It's a state of mind. And living in Israel, you and I and your, and your family, my family, we have to get up every morning and we have to remind ourselves that we, we have to find the energy and the, the peace and love to walk out the door where we might be stabbed that day, shot that day, or even blown up that day, uh, regardless who you are, where you are, where you walk. And I tell people, bombs don't know a race, uh, stabbings don't know a race, shootings don't know a race. Many, many even Israeli Arabs in, in, the, in the recent attack have been either shot at, attacked, or being caught in the middle uh, in a stabbing, shooting, or what be it. Uh, of course, not as much as the Jewish community is, but it this just shows that terror, anger knows no race. Um, and to, to find the energy to get up every day. Uh, how do the Jewish people do it? They, they, I think the, regardless whether they're secular Jew or religious Jew, they cling on the mere fact that there's a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that has got them thus far. Most can explain how, they, how they've, they've gone here today, but uh, they, they believe there's a God that, that, that got, them, got them here. To us Christian Arabs, uh, we believe Jesus Christ does not lie. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll always be with you. Uh, come come unto me, oh, you have been headless. I will give you rest. That's his promise. We cling on those and we do not let, uh, we do not mourn like the, the, the world. Those Paul talk teaches on that. We do not mourn like the world mourns. We do not have, we're not hopeless like the world has no hope because we have Jesus Christ. Now, um, one of the issues that we talked about on the program, this Christmas special program, was about the, the building issue. And it's something I want to, our viewers to be aware of because they can get involved in this. This is not just something we can talk about and it's very nice for them to know about, but they can actually, they can actually financially help you with this situation. So maybe you can tell us a bit about yeah. the building and what... Um, Boy, you just hit a trigger, emotional trigger, trigger in my heart because we have... Uh, uh, we have just recently got a big breakthrough on, on that issue. Basically, uh, why am I choosing Jerusalem? Uh, my uncle George, who I've told the story uh, in your program before, who was beaten up and uh, laying his life down for his neighbor as a Christian. He was a Christian. He, he, my, my uncle was to lay down his, his life for a neighbor. That uh, caused him his life. He was beaten to death laying down his life for, his, for this other person. And this happened in Jerusalem. In, in Mount of Olives. This was, uh, you know, less than 20, 19 years ago. Um, four years later, I, I started Calvary Church in Jerusalem to minister to the similar communities that actually killed my uncle. Um, it, within several years, we, we got attacked by rocks, stones, and so forth. They, that didn't scare us out. But they found our weak spot. The key, the, I call the, the key to our weak spot is that we are always under the mercy of landlords. 
So uh, they would go to the landlord, they'd tell them, if you don't kick him out, we're going to burn your property down. That, that, that's because you'd be renting a building for a Sunday service. Well, well Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we, we had, we're more than just a church. We had, a, we had a, a, a kids program, children's program, language programs, music programs, discipleship programs as an outreach. We were an outreach community center, not just a church. Um, so they found our weak spot. They would kick us out. That happened three times. And then the third property we got pushed out of uh, was just uh, a year and a half ago. Um, and after that, our, our attitude was, we'll rent one more. What's the big deal? We, we've been kicked out of three. Let's rent one more. But our reputation became so well known that we are troublemakers as uh, Christians who are not afraid to preach the gospel or not afraid to talk about Israel and talk about loving your neighbor, um, that nobody's willing to rent us anymore. We became high-risk tenants. That's what they called us, high-risk tenants. Um, so we made the decision that renting is a band-aid solution. We began to campaign to, to, to find a center in Jerusalem to, uh, to let the community know that we are putting a stake in the ground. We are here to stay. We are going to be a light in a dark world. And more and more things are happening in Jerusalem, terror and, and everything. It's coming, it's coming out of Jerusalem. Um, I'm, believing, I'm believing strongly that we have to stay in Jerusalem to influence as many Arab males and females, young and old, boys and girls, influence as many Arabs with the message, message of Jesus Christ. Today, uh, we are very close to, to making a down payment on a church property. Uh, we still need about $140,000 left to go. We're almost there to reach the goal. Um, if there is a time where people can help save a, a church in Jerusalem, if there is is a time a believer around the world can do something for the cause of Jerusalem right now, this is it. This is what Jesus would smile down upon as we are building His church. And uh, I expect you'll be showing that, be able to show them that after you've moved in, yes, you'll be able to do uh, a video oh with boy, you. We're uh, excited. We're going to be an opening. Uh, we're going we're gonna to invite the Muslim clerics. We're going to invite the head imam of Al-Aqsa Mosque, who I've been building a good relationship with. Um, it's going to be nice. We, we are envisioning, by God's grace, if people come through, we are envisioning to have our first service um, uh, at either Easter or, or shortly after Easter, have our first opening service. So help us. Um, it, it help us today to be able to move into this property, which we, we, which our ministry would own. It's not a rent. It's an own property where we can be a light in the community where we will be doing training programs. Also, people from the West, from Europe can come and spend a week and learn the Bible under our ministry and to be hands-on, maybe introduce them to Muslims, take them to Muslim homes, have lunch and coffee, uh, just to, again, to help teach you practically how to share Jesus Christ with your neighbor. Thank you so much for coming on the program, Steve. Great to have you with us. Uh, if you would like to contact us, don't forget you can email us at info at inthelastdays.com. And remember, we're living in the last days. You've been watching In The Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In the Last Days.